This should be a longer video, but I don't have the time. I have to get up or go to bed soon for work tomorrow, as well as the fact that the copyright infringement, so on and so forth, splitting up doesn't really work. Retention is terrible. Anyway, understanding biological precedence. Biological precedence is very simple to understand. Let's go back in time. 3.5 billion years ago, the first single-celled organisms came about. And ever since then, life has continually evolved, and has evolved from the simple to the complex in a never-ending stream of biological development and evolution. Simple or complex. Human culture, as we know it, if we're generous, likely goes back to about 70,000 years ago. That's when the first cave paintings in South Africa made by Homo sapiens living in, that, in a particular area of South Africa uh, were discovered. And often people uh, associate art and painting, in this case, cave paintings, with some form of culture, thought processes, perhaps language. Fast forward even further down the line uh, to the Fertile Crescent, Crescent and Sumeria, we have the Sumerians' city-state. Uh, the Sumerians preceded the Babylonians. They spoke a non-Semitic language. We have no idea. We can, we can understand it. We can decipher it, but we don't know what its genetic origin is. But they were the first documented complex civilization we have on record. That's not to say that the others didn't exist. Those are the ones we have about roughly 6,000 years ago. So even if we're generous and say up 70,000 years ago, up until then, our species, as well as every species on Earth, was subject to biological imperatives, very simple biological imperatives, eating, shitting, pissing, breathing, reproducing, dying, and that's it. That's what we were, we've been doing most of the time, our species included, most of the time. It's been comparatively recently, and let's say human beings have been around roughly 200,000 years, that is Homo sapiens, modern Homo sapiens. So for what 70,000 years of those 130,000 years, that's when we first came up with some sort of cultural concept, and then it took uh, almost, almost another 60,000 years to develop what one might call a civilization, a city-state, some form of complex social organism. And then to claim that all of the biological precedents, the evolution, our biological ancestors, our hominid ancestors, our mammalian ancestors, our reptilian, going all the way back to the first single-celled organisms that came about roughly 3.5 billion years ago. I mean, you know how long that took to go from single cell to multi celled Billions of years that all of a sudden, the biology that we are, we are, bottom line, at the end of the day, biological organisms, that all of that is somehow superseded either by culture or, or politics. Or if people are generous, they'll say it's a mixture of, of them. It's, it's much more complex than that. It's not... So... Let's understand biological precedence. We have this unbroken chain of biological evolution, biological organisms evolving, following certain guidelines, following well certain uh, imperatives rather, uh, reproduction, survival, 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 reproduction, gene replication. I've been called a reductionist. So what? That's how all science, that's how all of science operates. Science is in its very nature, by its very nature, the scientific methodology is reductionist. You go from the complex and try to reduce it to its smallest, uh, most uh, easy to understand parts. That's how science works. You go from complex to simple. You try to reduce things to the building blocks, the very basics. And it should be no different in social sciences. Occam's razor. What is the simplest explanation? Is the simplest explanation for women's affinity and willingness to take on feminism uh, the, the, the multi-layered and thousands of pages worth of gibberish written by, uh, by various Marxists and feminists? Or is it easier to explain, Occam's razor, understanding human biology. What are the particular bi biological imperatives of women as opposed to men? Well, women seek protection and provision. 
in the past, they sought it mostly from, from male mates. Whence, whence uh, the dominance hierarchy amongst men. And now they seek it both from men and from the state, from the government. What made it so easy for women who did not declare themselves feminists, what I like to call lowercase f feminists, what made it so easy for them to simply accept this en masse? The benefits that the capital F feminists fought for, most women accept it. Most, not all, but most women accept them. They appreciate them. They take the welfare. They take the scholarships. They take all of it. This is not sane and uh, cynical cynicism. That cynical cynicism, the Lord of Northumbria, made some good comments. It, arguing that Marxism is the cause and saying that it was Marxism is completely circular. Once again, biological precedence, that unbroken chain of evolution. Many of you understand Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Well, let's go all the way to the bottom. Eating, pissing, shitting, those are the needs. Then you have genetic replication. Uh, not too far behind that, or above that, rather. That's important to understand that we are above all, first and foremost, biological organisms and those imperatives that our ancestors and we ourselves experience. And I, by mean ancestors, I mean going all the way back to the first single-celled organisms on planet Earth. Those will necessarily take precedence over cultural imperatives. And why? Because culture, as cynical cynicism has said, as I have said, is necessarily informed by a unbroken chain of biological development and evolution that knew nothing about culture. All it knew was genetic gene replication, survival and reproduction, survival and reproduction. That was it. Roughly 70,000 years ago, our species developed some form of culture, if you're generous, say that cave paintings are an indication of this. And then even further down the line, about 6,000 years ago, we have the first real civilization, if you will, with writing and, and, the, and the whole lot. Well, okay. However, uh, all these new developments necessarily have to be informed by basic biological needs of human beings. And no one is ignoring culture. I've never ignored culture. Culture manifests itself differently. For example, let's take briefly, I don't have a lot of time, the South Korean example, Neo-Confucianism or Confucianism. Confucianism is an inherently collectivist philosophy. It subordinates the individual uh, for the good of the group or collective, much more so than anything that ever existed in the West. Uh, it's all about respect for the elders, and this is codified in the Korean language with various honorific mor morphological suffixes that are added to virtually every word. Elders are given deference, respect, and this was a survival strategy at some point in time, the Confucian, Confucian philosophy to, to, to maximize uh, a collective harmony by subordinating the individual to the group. It's a different reaction. Once again, I've talked about this before in my autopilot video, auto, uh, evolutionary autopilot. There are a, a wide range of variables, though it's not infinite, and, and an equally wide range of results that can come from these variables. In this case, uh, in, say, Eastern Asia, we had a Confucianist strain that uh, developed much more along collectivist, collectivistic lines. And in the West, we had other developments, which ended up being much more individualistic. That's not ignoring culture. But once again, Confucianism, in this sense, is a reaction to the to an environment. The environment, everyone, everyone in the world used to be a lot harsher. It used to be a lot more difficult to live. It was a survivalist environment up until very recently. So cultural philosophies, religious philosophies, and so on and so forth serve to uh, make make the world safer in many cases, in the case of Confucian at the expense of the individual, so the collective could thrive. Once again, this is being informed by the environment, a physical environment, biological imperative, survival, reproduction. Even when you think you've superseded 
biology, people say, well, people have sex without wanting to have children. Yes, but the desire to have sex itself is your desire to reproduce. That's what the desire is. So, looking for the simplest explanation, once again, why, why was it at, at the, really, when the Industrial Revolution was really kicking in, that women en masse, or many women at least, of the upper class, they already had, they were a leisure class, decided to fall for the, 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 the satanic marks. Could it be because as scarcity became uh, less of an issue, that is to say, uh, when, scarcity, when scarcity is its utmost, women uh, are on their best behavior and they are content with what they have because their survival depends on it, as Typhon Blue said recently. Uh, when scarcity becomes less of an issue, when things become more abundant, when the mechanization effect takes place, that's when women start behaving potentially badly. And, and that's when women decide that they don't need X, Y, and Z. Once again, simple explanations. Occam's razor. What's the simplest explanation? Biological imperatives. Women seek resources, protection, provision. They don't uh, they don't care where they get it from, ultimately. And it only happened, once again, during the, the, the height of the Industrial Revolution, moving forward into the 20th century, with an ever more comfortable environment, ever more, uh, an ever safer environment, and so on and so forth. This is not rocket scientist, a rocket science. If you want to understand something, Say let's say this something is the is 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 symbolized by the the alphabet the English alphabet A to Z. You don't start with Z, and and then talk about the complexities of X and Y, how they led to Z. No, if you have access to the information, you go all the way back to A, B, and C, and eventually you'll get to Z. Half of the half of the the, the convoluted uh, layers of the, in the middle of the alphabet are not even necessary. Once again, Occam's razor. Simplest explanation. You can sift all you want through the most arcane political philosophies, political writings, but at the end of the day, human beings are biological organisms. People seem to be in, 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 in rapt uh, denial of this. I have no idea why, uh, every t because everyone I know watching this video sleeps on, to varying degrees, eats, pisses, shits, and so on and so forth. Are you not a biological organism? Are we much more than that? Well, yes and no, because ultimately everything is bi is derived from a biological, uh, from the fact we are biological organisms. Our brains, organic, organic matter, our physiology. Yes, there are other there are complex issues that 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 are uh, less easily derived directly from uh, a pure pure biological perspective but uh, we to understand the universe is 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 necessarily to be reductionistic you have to re reduce things to their smallest parts that's how science operates that's how you bring about understanding that's how one understands things now unfortunately this video is far too short i wanted to go in a lot more depth on, on this but uh, time is limited and I have the stupid, ridiculous copyright infringement still. Hopefully, if I'm still alive, sometime in December it will be lifted. But anyway, that's it for now. Take care. May the gods watch over you.